well this is an ultra G510 or M620 whichever way you want to label it uh, apparently I didn't realize this is my backup motor because my other one's acting kind of weird it's taking out displays so I decided to put my backup motor on and come to find out it's the original motor to the bike that it was submerged uh, when my garage had flooded and I didn't realize the motor was underwater so I've been spending all day trying to clean this all up so I was able to clean all the gears I still got to clean this one yet it's, it was pretty nasty this right in here was completely caked and nasty and rusted rust all over the place this I got all cleaned up uh, motor still does spin quite well so motor probably okay but here's the questionable part now this is modular so I just took out the center piece which is this is the plastic piece that protects some of this stuff here I guess and I cleaned it up uh, this is how much rust there was that's still stuck on the plastic here and I can't get it off even with a wire brush <coughs> but that's it's pretty clean and I'm just hoping the controller is okay uh, but the controller comes apart with uh, two plastic screws and one metal screw uh, two plastic screws separate the two boards like that the two plastic screws because it's modular now I gotta figure out the rest of it here's the other plastic screw and knocked it on the floor okay you got one screw here which is here which is this okay and you got a few more screws by the MOSFETs here that hold the main wires in I can't believe there's so much corrosion on the gears but absolutely nothing on wiring not a single corrosion mark anywhere on the wiring even when you look down the center of the connector not a single wire is corroded strange so this is the first time I'm taking one of these apart but I'm hoping that <coughs> it's okay I gotta take it apart to clean the rest of this crud out of this casing and also uh, because I'm videoing it I'll know how to put it back together <laughs> that's that would be a plus it looks like the main positive power is corroded the main positive is corroded for the battery the battery connector there is definitely corrosion on uh, on the board here uh, here's the ground so it's got five of these screws that hold all the wires in power and ground okay there's the power and ground to that board so that board is the yeah you can see the corrosion on the power yeah so hopefully this board pops out of here easy enough Ugh. 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 Oh, there's always got to be one. 
Okay, uh, let's see here. Let's see if we can bump it a little bit. Nope. Ah. That's the main board. I want to see on the underside to see. I doubt if there's any corrosion on the underside because the way <laughs> the way that's held in there, huh? I don't know. But it is slotted like a with a flat blade too. So maybe I can get a flat blade in there. Get that screw out. Maybe I can get it with that. I can't get enough leverage. Uh, a pair of pliers will do. Let's see. Let's see if we can turn this with a pair of pliers. Break it loose. Nope. How about this one? Definitely fits better. I turned it a little bit. Ah, damn. I don't know. This is the, all the MOSFETs for the actual controller. I ordered uh, some new gaskets for it already. $7.50 for each gasket for this primary gasket. Worst case scenario, I could put the original motor back on the uh, bike, the other original motor, and uh, try to figure out what's causing the, the original display, the DPC-18, uh, I had posted on, on uh, Endless Sphere um, site and a couple other forum sites that we're having the same issues with the Ultra G510 motors uh, trashing uh, displays the original DPC-18 lasted for about 1500 miles then all of a sudden it just toasted it and it just quit working one day so I uh, put on a generic one uh, fine compatible display it's just a generic, it's called the um, BL-18, I think is what it's called. Uh, but the display works quite well. Here, here it is. Here's the BL-18. I wanted to go with a smaller displays on all my bikes. So I had ordered three of these. They were only 25 bucks each. So that was very reasonable, uh, and it tells you everything that the larger displays do, and it has the, you know, like, uh, not the indigo blue, but uh, the white and white and black, black and white uh, screen, which is very easy to read no matter what time of the day it is. Well, anyhow, uh, these are still on my uh, two BBS HD bikes, and they work flawlessly. This one worked for about 500 miles on uh, the ultra motor and then just all of a sudden one day uh, the display popped an error 30 code it's called a communication error the research that I've done on it that's what I found 
so far I found a few other people were having this uh, particular issue with the ultra five uh, ultra g510 motor uh, taking out displays and they said if it torches your display and another display that you plug up to it uh, to that particular motor that torched your first display is going to instantly take out your second display well it didn't instantly take it out at that time because it lasted for about uh, this one was about three between three and five hundred miles before it started popping up with that error 30 code uh, it doesn't seem to affect the display in any way shape or form uh, it displays everything correctly except for your speed that's the only thing it doesn't display it just doesn't display your actual speed that you're going but it still logs all the miles and everything so that circuit must be separate from the rest of the display which happens to be different from the DPC 18 and the DPC 14 so after this one I plugged up my DPC 14 Bafang authentic Bafang uh, display that lasted for about 300 miles and it just took it out yesterday or day before yesterday and instantly poof no warning no nothing just instantly and I had to pedal the bike back uh, a couple miles which wasn't uh, easy on this uh, 20 inch frame uh, with these 20 inch fat bike tires and double battery so it's it's not like the, it's the lightest bike you could think but um, oh, I made it back no problem I just had to walk part of it uh, that hill I just couldn't make it up so I had to walk it up the hill uh, so now that's what contemplated me because I read more research on uh, uh, something wrong with the controller my spare my motor I just took off of the bike which is right here which is right here works perfectly fine absolutely nothing wrong with it but this is the one that was taken out the displays so I figured okay I'll just plug up my backup motor and tinker around with that one and see if I'm uh, see if it has the same issue that uh, a few other people had pointed out on uh, main controller board uh, about a burnt chip or something like that so uh, that I was going to take that one apart but when I installed this on the bike the pedals were locked rock solid and I couldn't believe it so I had to take it I took it back off this is the one uh, the fang themselves sent me directly uh, because uh, originally the original motor this primary gear and the paw had broken off inside and made the motor run backwards so uh, Bafang instead of sending me the parts because at the time the motor was too new uh, I mean really new uh, so no one had parts at all and I got lucky within a month I found a company greenbikekit.com that had every single part for the ultra motor so I had ordered primary gear and the paw because I took it all apart and found out this is what was wrong it cost me ninety six dollars for these two pieces put the motor back together worked perfectly absolutely nothing wrong with it now so I that's the, that's the original motor that was on the bike that I just took off like I said this was the backup motor that I had gotten from Bafang directly that they had sent me free of charge uh, and then um, when the garage flooded this backup motor which was the brand new Bafang one as you can see the Bafang logo on it uh, this one was underwater which I didn't know it was I didn't know it was a, went under wonder under that nasty uh, sewage water is what it was that's why I corroded so quickly and so bad because it uh, took out one of my uh, batteries as well it knocked over it made my uh, my DK bike float on the front end which made the bike fall over which put the bike in the water uh, and uh, it corroded uh, the BMS on the battery 
and just shorted it out. It blew uh, blew the BMS apart. Luckily, it was a Yosh battery. Uh, Yosh went ahead and gave me a brand new battery anyhow, just out of goodwill. Because I use exclusively their batteries because, you know, uh, they're UL listed or certified before they had to be certified. They were already certified. So that's why I like the Yosh batteries. Uh, you never have any issues with them. And the company sticks behind their stuff. Uh, so uh, that's the reason why I like the Yosh batteries. But anyhow, back to this thing. So this is what I'm running into. Uh, I can get this whole assembly, my, uh, I think including the gears? I couldn't remember. Let me take a quick look. Uh, I think you can get the whole assembly for like $120, $129. The whole assembly. There it is. Uh, let's see here. M620. Uh, yeah, you can get the whole assembly minus the gears, controller, case, everything. This whole whole half side of the motor for $115 right here. That's including the controller. Uh, for $115 and uh, $10 shipping. So if I really need one, I, they're readily available. I can easily get one. So that's not a problem. Um, so I went ahead and ordered another display. But I went with a small display but I because I couldn't find the BL18s anymore. No one has them. They're not available anywhere. Uh, I can't even find out who actually made uh, the BL18 displays. I don't even know who makes them. But uh, that's what I have now. So I can't even use the bike unless uh, you know I use the bike and it just won't give me any speed speed reading but if I really wanted to uh, see my own speed all I had to do was you know uh, open the speed app on my uh, phone if I really needed to see how fast I was going but uh, that's it so far I ordered a couple other parts a couple uh, extra um, chain ring nuts Cause these uh, these are such fine thread they strip out quite easily these uh, nuts that's astonishing how easily they strip but that's okay uh, I need I need a couple of them anyhow so because here's one that's completely stripped I mean it's 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 completely stripped on and off on and off changing your chain rings uh, it, it'll wear this nut out real quick so it, oh and it's uh left-handed thread meaning uh, you turn it left it tightens it up you turn it right it loosens it up it's left-handed thread um, okay I think I'll take a break now and get some more coffee Ugh. well gonna continue with this <coughs> I cleaned everything up all the gears and everything they cleaned up very nicely <coughs> from what I can make out on the primary board here everything looks good uh, no heavy-duty solder I mean uh, corrosion on any of the solder connections so far that I found so uh, now what I'll do is I'll get a blade maybe I can take this one out yeah and use it and scrape this old gasket off before I put it back together
I'm not going to put it on the bike until I get the new gaskets in, which will be about a week. But I'll be able to assemble it and uh, test it to make sure it's okay. Everything works on it. So, you know, that, that'll be a plus. If it does work, that's a big plus. <laughs> if it does work. I know a razor blade can cut into this aluminum quite easily. That's why you got to be careful when you're scraping these uh, old gaskets off. Because this thing is supposed to be watertight, but I guess it isn't. <laughs> kind of tells you it isn't if it uh, completely corroded the primary gears. So I guess you could say it's water repellent. But uh, the water that this was submerged in was that sewage type water. So, and you know what sewage does to uh, any kind of metal. It just destroys it. So, I'm surprised it's not worse than what it is. If the controller still works, that'll save me 115 bucks. Because, like I said, I can buy this whole complete controller complete, you know, minus these gears for 115 dollars and 10 dollars shipping. So, you know, worst case scenario, I just want to make sure the armature and everything are all good. Because it doesn't look like any kind of corrosion got down inside there. That's a complete separate chamber by the looks of it. But it looks like it has an opening there. Where the primary spider gear is. Or what do you call that type of uh, gear? I think it's called a spider. Uh, I think that's what it's called. But anyhow, that uh, it doesn't look like anything got down inside. Uh, the motor spins freely, you know, except for, you know, the magnets grabbing a hold of it, but uh, other than that, uh, the motor seems to spin quite freely, so, and I sprayed it and cleaned it out as best I could, could without taking the other side of it apart, and if I did that, need new gaskets for the other side, too, <laughs> but I already made the order, so. But this came apart quite easily. I was quite surprised. This is easier to work on than a BBS HD, technically. It actually comes apart easier than a BBS HD. I got two BBS HDs. Well, I've only ever had to change the controller on one of them. I got a couple bad controllers with the uh, Air 12 code, which are those uh, shunt resistors. So, you know, uh, those are easily fixed. I figured out a way to get the controller out of uh, the case without digging through all of that, uh, what do they call it, uh, that seal silicone that they have it in case. They have the whole controller encased in silicone, so you actually can't even repair it. But it happens to be those shunt resistors on the back side of that uh, particular uh, controllers so all you have to do is figure out a way to get the controller out of 
the case without having to dig through all of that silicone sealant that they uh, completely encased uh, the controller in. So, I figured out a way to do that. So since I was able to do that, I was able to expose the two resistors on the back side. But uh, I haven't, I've never made an order for the resistors because I've never needed the, the controllers fixed yet. But I should go ahead and try to fix them anyhow, just to have them for backups. In case one of my BBS HDs go bad. I'm astonished that... Not a single major electrical connection on this motor has any kind of corrosion on it whatsoever. Except, yeah, one. One has it. But no other connector on this motor whatsoever has any kind of corrosion. But all of the gears did. I just, I just don't get it. Usually electrical are the first ones to get corroded. Usually. For some odd reason, this one didn't. Oh, I ain't, I ain't uh, complaining about it. It's just, it's just, just weird. Because usually, you know, electric connections are usually the first thing to get corrosion. Well, look what happened to one of my batteries. It took out one of my batteries. That was a brand new battery too. That it took out. I only had it for like a month. Oh, what actually holds this uh, controller in place is actually three screws and two plastic ones. L seriously. Two plastic ones and three screws, three of these small screws, one, uh, uh, two small screws and two plastic ones. Plastic one here, plastic one here, which are standoffs for the second uh, layer of the board, and uh, Phillips here and a Phillips here. And then you got all of your power wires connected here. Uh, positive, negative, and your three uh, armature wires. Uh, you got a screw, uh, you know, no, yeah, screw here, here. Uh, here's a plastic standoff, plastic standoff, Phillips, Phillips. That's it. That's all it holds it in. It's on a metal uh, aluminum backing plate. It's not glued down or anything. It just sits in here like this. Just a like of this. So the first thing I'll do is I'll put the plastic ones in first. And they screw directly into the aluminum. <laughs> it's weird. It's really weird. See, this is the tough one because it's right here by this uh, capacitor. Because you really can't spin it around. You really can't spin it, so it's like, uh, oh, it's really pain in the butt to get in there. So I take my needle nose like this, and hopefully I can spin it in there. I'm hoping it's screwing in. I think it is. Yeah, it feels like it is. But it's only a plastic screw, so you've got to be very delicate with it. I'll loosen the other one up, I guess. Allow it to move a little bit. It's just weird. 
I guess they needed to use the, the plastic standoffs for some odd reason. And they've used plastic screws too that screw into these plastic standoffs. That's the other thing too. They use plastic screws too. Just make sure they're snug. Yeah, I, I guess you definitely because they are only plastic. You really don't want to tighten them down very much. You snug them, I guess. Really wouldn't want to do them any more than that. Yeah, I ain't gonna push my luck. Okay, then you got the two Phillips. Thank goodness for my coffee. Uh, it's 3.42 a.m. Okay, now. Here's this one. And this one. Now, uh, ooh, ooh. I don't remember. Okay, I remember how the positive and negative goes. I know which one those go to because those fit down behind the. They fit down behind the stuff. And they got these really long screws. I gotta remember which one, like the green, yellow one, red. I'll, I'll look at the, uh, look back at the video. And see how they go on there. Should have took a picture. That's what I should have done. Oh, that's right. I have to use the small screwdriver for these. Yeah. There we go. Okay, that's the ground. And the hot wrapped around this capacitor. Oh, they had blue Loctite on them, too. <laughs> so I'm crossing my fingers that this controller still works. I guess I'll find out once I get everything together again. Ah, and that's a tight fit. Maybe I should try to put it on there first and then wrap it around. Okay, there's that. Now, we're going to tighten it down and wrap it around here. Wraps around that capacitor over there and over there. And it wraps around there. And this rubber garment. Oh, perfect. 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 Okay, now I can tighten these well. Hot. There's the ground.
<laughs> there. Now, before I can plug this on, I gotta remember how those uh, how those uh, three went on there. I have to uh, probably look at a video. Uh, to see just to make sure uh, ultra tear down Zero. G510, there it is. Okay, let's see if it has a breakdown of it. That's it. Ten months ago. Oh, he's doing the uh, whole thing. I need to see the controller side. That's what I need to see. I need to see the controller. Which wires go where on the controller itself? Uh, there we go. There we go. Huh. Okay. It's like that. The blue one. Blue one goes here, according to that, the blue one goes there, okay, the green one goes over here, And the black goes in the middle, which is the yellow. Yeah. Which is the yellow one. Okay, now how this sits on there. Hmm. Uh, where's my... There it is. This piece here. Okay, this takes a couple screws. Three screws. Yeah. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah. Three screws hold this in. Um, this here. Okay, it goes around that. Yeah, okay. It goes around that. Yeah, okay, all right. Uh, the wires come on this side of this controller, this second plate here. The blue comes up through here. And these two go this direction. Okay. These two go in that direction.
goes in that direction. Okay, and this one goes the same way right there. Okay, now this board should fit right on there nice and snug like. Should fit on there nice and snug like. Maybe? Where's my magnifier? Oh, there it is. I want to make sure all of those pins go in the slots. Okay, there's that one. There's that one. I think it went in. I felt like it did. Okay, it lined up over there. Yeah. Felt like it went right in. Okay. Now, the only thing that holds this top one on in place is the two plastic screws that's the only thing that holds it on <laughs> oh that's just a sticker okay that's what that is that's just some old residue there so that should be okay a little residue left here yeah that's nothing there Everything looks okay. Like I said, I'm crossing my fingers. And here's these plastic screws. I was a kid. You can see they're plastic screws. <laughs> they're actually plastic Phillips screws. Hey. <laughs> I just laugh at those things because they're kind of useless if you think about it because you would snap them off in a heartbeat you think if they wouldn't come on wouldn't come on screwed what would you do and if you broke them off how would you fix it hmm the other, the other one's not lining up. Why? Why isn't that other one lining up? Did this go all the way in? I can't see the pins. In the socket. Oh, there's the socket. Okay. There, it definitely went in that time. Huh. The plastic screw, it just doesn't want to go in straight. 
for some odd reason. He just doesn't want to go in straight because of that plastic standoff. It just, I don't know, it just doesn't want to go in straight straight. But it does go in perfectly fine. Yep, yeah, it tightened it down. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. And then this one. Okay, there's the controllers back together. Well, so much back together. So, so back together. Now, let's see if this will... This plate will fit on there. Supposed to cover these wires right there. And these ones supposed to stick outwards. Like so. Yeah. So I did get all the wires correct. You got one, two, three. Three screws. Uh, these regular Phillips? Yeah, these were regular Phillips. Okay, there's the controller back together. Now, these gears, all of these gears have to go in here. Ah. Leftover grease remnant. Ah. dry fit everything make sure everything slides in and out nice and smoothly as you can see the motor spins perfectly fine so it definitely spins perfectly fine so uh, okay got power sensor uh, this is the hall sensor. No, this is the torque. Hall sensor. And phases. Okay, now. it They say you're supposed to put these two in simultaneously. At the same time. But, uh... I think after you get the big gear in. But you have to put... The Paul in here first. And get all the splines to line up. There. Okay, now you gotta put this in there. And you gotta get all those splines to line up correctly why you slide it in place eh? Hey, that's the problem <laughs> to try to get it to go in there that's the issue when you oh wow Mm, ah, right. It's set. <laughs> it's set. Perfect. Yeah, but why won't the gear turn? Why won't the gear turn? Huh.
When would the gear turn? This here. Huh. Something holding it. That was the original problem. This wouldn't move. Okay, here's this. Yeah, but it turns perfectly fine there. Why well, won't it turn here? Oh, this bearing. This bearing is seized up. That's why it won't turn. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Oh. The bearing is seized up. That's why it won't turn. I can uh, unfreeze this bearing. Otherwise, this is going to cost me another hundred bucks. Because when you have to order this and the paw together. Oh, well, these bearings are fine. Every, all the other bearings seem to be perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah, these ones feel good. These ones here. Ah, his bearing is seized. Oh boy. Well, kind of looks like I'm putting the old motor back on. Yep. Uh, is there any way I can test this controller? Yeah, I can test this controller here on the bench. Well, that's kind of the end of this one. Uh, seized bearing in the primary gear. Yeah, this one's okay. Seized bearing on the inside here. Huh. I'm gonna try to break it loose. <laughs> Wonder if I can break it loose. Wonder if I can. Good boy. Yeah. That ain't gonna break loose. Yeah. No. That ain't gonna break loose. No way. Oh, wait a second. It might. Did I get it broke loose? Yeah, I did. Ah, but damn, I did. Now, if I can get it apart, get that bearing taken apart, and lube it. Let's see if I can. These are pain in the butt to get out, too. These here. You have to like kind of wiggle them like this. You have to kind of wiggle it up out. It wasn't spinning on that, I don't think. Ah, I wonder if I could uh, spray some lube in there. Hey, let me try it. Get some lube up inside there. And slap it on there. Obviously without the paw. And let's see if it'll 
at least loosen up enough to where I can get the, the rubber seal out of it, out of the side of the bearing, to see Yeah, it's tight. It's tight. Yeah, but going in the other... Oh, it's loosening up this way. Yeah, there it's loosening up. Must be working this magic WD-40, I guess. Let's see here. See, the WD-40 is going to work its magic. Get up inside there. Well, so much for that. I'm just going to have to order it, order a new one. Because this is spinning on uh, this shaft here. It's spinning on that. Yeah. Yeah, it's spinning on it. Because I still can't turn this thing by hand. It's in, in a race. Yeah. Well. Oh well. Oh well. Anyhow. That's it for this video. I need a new primary and a... Well, you order them in pair in a set. The primary and... Uh, the paw you order it as a set and it's ninety six dollars and ten dollars shipping for this primary gear I have no other choice but before I do that I want to test that controller before I do that okay so much for that Thanks for watching if this helps anybody.